Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're going to be finding out what happened to the Native Americans, specifically the Wapiti Indians, after you beat Red Dead Redemption 2. So the Native Americans turned out to be a huge part of the Red Dead Redemption 2 storyline, specifically the Wapiti Indian tribe, which consists of three notable members. You have Chief Rains Fall, you have his son, Eagle Flies, and then you have another character, Peta, who is sort of like one of the friends of uh, Eagle Flies. And the Wapiti were once fierce warriors who roamed the heartlands of New Hanover. Alas, with the arrival of invaders to their land, many years of war were fought, which left the Wapiti greatly weakened. And their chief, Rains Fall, would ultimately sign treaty after treaty after treaty with them, which would be broken consistently throughout the game. And we start to see this towards the later chapters of the game, like in 4, 5, and 6, where you actually have to start helping out the Native Americans. And essentially what the entire treaty and argument is about here is the United States Army wants to move the Wapiti Indians off their land because they apparently have found oil. And the United States government wants to drill for this oil, thus moving them away from their land, which is already significantly smaller. And the United States Army is also withholding supplies from them and medicine. So it's a really bad situation. And long story short, there is no deal made. Uh, Rains Falls end up losing his son, Eagle Flies. He actually dies in one of the final battles of the game. But if you were to just play out the game without doing anything extra, you really wouldn't know what happened to them, especially by the epilogue, which is in 1907, eight years after the game. So it kind of begs the question, well, what happened to them? Did they revolt? Did they have another war? Did they move away? That's what we're gonna be finding out in this video today. So we actually get a good bit of clarity on this in a newspaper article that you can ultimately read. And that newspaper is the Blackwater Ledger number 72. So you can see it is towards the later part of the game after you beat chapter six and once you are squarely in 1907. And there's an article called Pump Jacks Sit Silent. No oil found at Wapiti. Investors allege fraud. The article says the oil reserves discovered on land near the Wapiti Indian Reservation in 1899 have turned up dry and all drilling operations have ceased and packed up. There were high hopes for the location following a detailed exploration by the Leland Oil Development Company on behalf of Cornwall Kerosene and Tar, and a number of petroleum outfits had sought to develop it into a well-paying field. Workers flocked to the area in anticipation of jobs that would pay as much as 22 cents an hour. Companies sank well after well, coming up nearly with only a minuscule amount of oil being found. Not enough to keep operations running. The tribe at the reservation went on the run after a series of attacks on the army, culminating in a bloody battle at the Cornwall Kerosene and Tar Factory around the time of the news of the oil discovery became known. Many members of the tribe were gunned down in Wyoming, but a few members are believed to have escaped into Canada. It is unknown what will happen to the Indian reservation land moving forward, as there are no Indians in the area to relocate there currently. Wow, so that gives us a ton of details. So starting from the top, it turns out that the oil that caused the Indians to go to all the initial battles and have those treaties broken, it turns out that that didn't exist. There was no oil underneath their land. It was a giant sham, a scam, a hoax. It was a fraud just to get them to leave. So how horrible is that? Not only for the Indians and the Native Americans, but also the people that flocked there for jobs that were supposed to get 22 cents an hour, they don't have work either. And this resulted in a series of attacks where the Indians actually were gunned down in Wyoming. So we know what happened to a lot of the Wapiti Indians. They were gunned down in Wyoming with only a few escaping. However, none are currently back at the Wapiti Indian Reservation. And that's something I wanted to check out as well. What happens if you go back to the Wapiti Indian Reservation 
after the epilogue. And it's exactly as the newspaper article describes it. There are no Indians here. Uh, everything is sort of, you know, torn down and really run down. You can see their teepees are no longer there. There's a couple of like locked sheds and houses that you don't have access to, but that's about it. There seems to be trash and debris everywhere. And you can also see the remains of the oil rigs that they were talking about as well. And they are clearly not working. Those oil derricks are certainly not pumping oil out of the ground. So you can clearly see there that this newspaper article matches what you see if you actually return back to the Wapiti Indian Reservation. So now that we know what happened to the Native Americans as a whole, what happened to our specific characters? Well, we actually know that Eagle Flies dies in one of the final missions of the game, a mission called My Last Boy. And he died actually doing so trying to get revenge on the U.S. Army, who actually killed his brother and his mother. So you can clearly see why he is uh, very much emotionally connected to this entire story. So we know what happens to Eagle Flies. We don't know what happens to Peta, who is actually one of the associates of Eagle Flies. I think it's safe to say that he either escaped or was one of those that was ultimately gunned down in Wyoming because we don't see him in the epilogue and we also don't see him after that mission, My Last Boy. So I guess we can just assume that he was a associate of both of those characters. The most details we get is out of Rain's Fall, who we can actually see in the epilogue. You can actually run into him at the train station in uh, Annisburg, and he actually reveals a ton of information. So take a listen to this right here. Excuse me. Hello? Didn't I meet you a long time ago? I don't know. With uh, Arthur? Arthur Morgan? Oh, yes. Yeah. My name is Rainsfall. And I'm Jim Milton. John Marston. Oh. I mean, is Arthur... Uh... He passed away a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He saved my life. He gave his. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> and you? I know you had tough times. Ah, uh, well... My people aren't really a tribe. They're just a bunch of families, I suppose. But we're in Canada now. It's, uh... What are you doing here? I... I don't really know. My son, I suppose. Oh, he fell. I, I know. I'm sorry. I've got a son. I'm very sorry. Oh, it was a long time ago now. Well, it's good to see you, Mr. Marston. <laughs> and you. Uh, Okay, so that gave us a lot of information, and essentially it confirms what that newspaper article said, that most of the tribe, or at least some of the tribe, moved to Canada, and that's at least where he has gone as well. So we know Rain's Fall was able to escape, and he has moved to Canada. The only reason he returned to America, though, was to mourn the death of his son, which eight years later, he is still not fully recovered from. Man, that is tragic right there. And we can even see what Rain's Fall does when he returns to America. It seems as if he goes to the grave site of his son, Eagle Flies. And this is actually what you see in the cutscene of the credits where you can see him on top of the mountain near Donner Falls, and there's an eagle that flies over his head, which I think can only assume that that is his son, or at least to be a symbol of his son. So it's an incredibly sad and tragic tale, what happened to the Native Americans in Red Dead Redemption 2, but I think it opens up actually a really cool opportunity. I think it would be so neat if we got to maybe explore the Native Americans in some sort of DLC because it seems as if they went off to Canada. And we know that Charles, who's also Native American, had that same idea as well. At the very end of the game, he offered up the idea that he would like to go to Canada as well. 
He reveals this in the final mission of the epilogue, American Venom. You interested in bounty hunting, Charles? My last assistant <laughs> was put out to pasture. No, that work ain't for me. I, uh, I think I might get out of here. Go north, Canada, find a woman, start a family if I can. I see how that life, well, I'd like to try it. Oh, hey, John, you've given him the family book. I thought we would have inspired him to a life of celibacy and isolation. <laughs> so could it be possible to have a DLC featured around Charles Smith and the Native Americans up in Canada? I think that would be really cool. So as always, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. That is what happens to the Native Americans after you beat Red Dead Redemption 2. Let me know what you think about their story and would you like to see it be expanded in an update or a DLC? Again, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.